Hey everybody, Downstater here, uh, working on a Mahindra tractor today. Uh, before I get to that, basically I want to make an intro for myself and what I'm looking to do on this channel. Uh, being the first kind of real video I'm putting up, um, basically I'm, uh, I do some off-grid consulting, uh, I did some fabrication welding earlier in my life, electrical work, uh, I was an electrician for a couple years, owned a company, um, and uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, some some site work and things of that nature. Uh, just kind of a jack of all trades. Just been had my hands in a lot of stuff over the years. Um, so that's about it. Um, channel's going to be mostly off grid living type stuff, solar cabin stuff, um, some tractor stuff that I'm about to get into in a minute. Um, I'm also a big motorcyclist, so I got some ADV type stuff, some enduro. You know, I like uh, street and dirt riding. Um, so that's kind of a good overview of, of who I am and what I'm looking to do. Just kind of share some knowledge, not looking to make any money, uh, and just kind of start a, start a discussion, you know? So anyway, uh, what I'm working on today is a Mahindra, uh, Max 26 XL, uh, 20, 2015, I think. Don't even know. I buy and sell a lot of tractors, um, <clears throat> just kind of for fun over the years. Uh, I've been doing it for a while. So this particular tractor came uh, with just a loader um, and I installed uh, a backhoe just because I typically need backhoes on a lot of the jobs I do and I have a pretty good connection with a local dealer so got the backhoe for a decent price and, and that was that. Um, backhoe install, I'll probably make a video about that. I didn't take a whole lot of video of it. It was a pain in the butt as you can imagine. It's a lot of bolts, a lot of torques, a lot of this, a lot of that. It's very finicky and you know but it's not bad either i mean i'm not a professional mechanic and i had it done in about five hours so if you have a max 26 or even a max 24 max 25 any of these those all those tractors are basically the same just so you know uh it's not a bad install it's pretty easy actually um so this tractor did not come with a quick attach loader um, in other words the bucket was a pin on not quick attach which is what i want obviously it's what everybody wants i got this tractor for a song you know it only had 100 hours i'm not even going to tell you the price it was it was cheap um but it didn't you know it was a 20 i think 2015 like i said didn't have a, a quick attach loader had pin on only uh, which kind of sucks you can't put forks on it you can't put a grapple there's a lot of things you kind of want to do and can't do in that situation so I, uh, I went ahead and uh, picked up some some parts. Um, so basically, you have some options. You can go to WorkSaver, and they can get you you know an adapter, or you can actually go to Mahindra, uh, believe it or not, and they make one for the newer model. They don't make one for this, but they make one for the Max 26 XLT, which is the newer model. Honestly. I don't love it. They seems like they kind of cheaped out on a couple parts, and I'll get into that in a second here. Um, the only difference, actually, I'll get into it right now. The only difference is that tractor has three quarter pins. This tractor has one inch pins. So on that adapter, you need to drill out the pins to one inch. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, for the price difference of I think about three hundred dollars, it's well worth it in my opinion. Um, you know, the, the one inch bits, well, I stepped it up from seven eighths to one inch. Uh, it costs roughly uh, like $40 for a cobalt one inch bit. Um, seven eighths is about the same, maybe a little less. Uh, and those are for hardened steel. You know, they do a good job. Uh, you just gotta go slow, plenty of oil. You, you guys know the deal. I don't need to explain how to drill metal. Uh, it is a hardened bushing and I'll get into that in a second. So this is a hardened bushing. Um, there's eight holes you need to do. So again, if you don't want to work fine, go go spend 900 bucks and grab the work saver. No worries, I, I get it. Um, if you don't mind a little bit of work, which it's really not bad, I think, um, and saving a bunch of money, a couple hundred dollars, uh, I say go for the Mahindra piece. Plus the Mahindra one's a little bit lighter, it's more made for the unit, um, so you're not kind of taking a, a weight tax um, on the other ones. You know, the other ones are quite heavy. This one is built for a lighter tractor so it's not overbuilt and you're not you know you don't need a skid steer grade adapter you need the one that's for this tractor because it, it saves that weight this thing's only like 50 something pounds so um it's about four and change 450 i think i paid for the adapter not too bad it's a pretty good savings and then like i said the bits were um a couple bucks you know 40 50 bucks uh it took about a day you know a day off and on having a coffee here listening to a podcast whatever so not too bad, pretty pretty quick, easy job. Um, 
The only other difference is the ears um, on this adapter are just slightly wider than the legs on my loader. You know, the actual arms that come down and the, obviously the hydraulic cylinders, same, same width. So you do need some one inch uh, washers basically. Um, you can get them tractor supply, fast and all greens or whatever. There's plenty of places to grab them from. Um, but otherwise, that's it. You know, you just got to drill out the bushings and there's plenty of meat left on those bushings. You don't have to worry about that. Um, they're, they're super big bushings. Once, even once you go in uh, one inch, you know, you're basically going an eighth on each side. It's not a lot, you know, so there's tons of meat left on the bone afterwards. And, um, and then, like I said, washer on each side, pop it right back on. Um, the only other thing too is the newer loader has a uh, clip style retainer and then bolts from the other side. Not a big fan. I like pins. Um, so mine, I'm using my original pins, obviously the one inch pins with um, through bolts. So we'll get to that in a sec. All right, YouTube, this is Downstater again. I'm looking at the tractor now. So this is a Max 26, like I said. There is your backhoe. She's in pretty good shape. 108 hours, I believe, is on the clock. Um, so let's get down to it. Oh, boy, let me put the old go juice right there, a little margarita in my life. Um, so stock bucket, obviously. Uh, previous owner bolted those on. I don't like doing that. I weld those on, but anyway. Uh, stock, you know, mounting pin holes right here. Basically, tomorrow, uh, I'll video that, but uh, going to be well, or excuse me, uh, grinding all of this off. It's a bit tedious, a bit of a pain in the ass, but you got to do that regardless of which adapter you use. So, uh, regardless of where you go this way, you have to do this. I could just grind these off and put filler plates in, uh, but you don't really need the extra weight on this machine for one thing, and that's kind of almost more work. Um, so I'm probably just going to yank these pieces of metal straight off of here. Uh, there's a seam all the way around. It's a, like I said, it's a hassle, but, uh, we'll get it done. So, uh, on the front there, Oh, let me get over here. So this is the, uh, adapter plate. This gets flipped around and welded to the back of the bucket. Uh, Word of the wise and a little bit of a warning to everybody, there are many different makes and models and brands. A lot of stuff comes from China. It is absolute junk. The tolerances are wonky as hell on some of it. This one, although I don't love the welds on here, eh, a little bit annoying to see that kind of shit. But anyway, um, this one is made by WorkSaver, which is a U.S. company. These are built in America. Um, you know, nice thick gauge steel. Uh, these are broken, not welded. Um, you know, nice, nice thick. I mean, this is, this is every bit of three eighths right here, probably more than that, actually. Um, that's pretty damn thick. I'd have to measure that to make sure, but it's much thicker than the actual frame. And this is where a lot of the weight loading comes from. You know, a lot of the pressure from picking up the bucket or whatever you have on, um, you know, on the bucket is, is, is really, especially right here, you know, that's where a ton of the stress comes from. So also the big thing though, is, is the tolerance from here to here, you know, it needs to be precise. If it's not precise, you know, you get a ton of slop on the adapter itself right here. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, I, I, I saw, and I've done this before on another adapter and it was loose and I, I was at a friend's place. Oh, the other day, and he had a couple of these for sale, and um, they were Chinese, and, you know, they were the Tomahawk stuff, you know, and I, I went and I put my adapter inside of it, which this is a nice adapter. This is made by a U.S. company, solid, you know, that's an OEM adapter. It's it's well built, you know, um, and I put it in the Tomahawk Chinese um, plate. And good Lord, I mean, there was a quarter inch of slop easily. It was, it was atrocious. You know, I was, I was like shocked. So was he, he looked at it and he went, oh my God, I can't, I can't sell that. You know, he's like, I never even put an adapter inside of one. I didn't even know how bad they were. Um, and it was heavy duty. The thing was built like a, sh you know, battleship. It was a hundred pounds and, um, you know, really nicely built, overbuilt, honestly, for my use, but the tolerances were so sloppy and garbage. It was just stupid. So anyway, kind of long winded, but just be careful what, uh, you know, what, ad what plate you buy, you know, and what adapter you buy, but most of the adapters are pretty good quality, especially if you go OEM like this. Um, so like I said, tomorrow I'll be cutting, you know, this whole section off right here and then welding this entire section onto the back of here. Uh, probably do a nice lap weld with the MIG. Uh, I have a, Hobart 
210 back behind the kids' bikes back there um, that I've I've had for years. It's basically the same as a Miller. Good good machine. I've had it for, for a long time. Uh, so this was a nightmare. And although I said it was easier earlier, I mean, easy is a pretty uh, <laughs> subjective term right in this situation. Um, and please excuse, you know, the pretty nasty uh, drilling marks you can see there. Um I did bring this to a buddy's machine shop today to try to go the easy route. I have a good friend that owns a really high-end machine shop, and we tried every which way to get it onto his, his – he's got a really nice – got a couple, actually, industrial presses there. And there was just no way to get this on because of the length of it and how awkward it is. There was just – there was no way to get it into a press. You know, we tried every which way. So – um, I basically used a long cobalt drill shank uh, to do. I went seven eighths first, all the way through this, all the way through that. So I used this as a guide. Um, swapped out to a one inch, same thing. Boop, boop, right through. All right. So I was using the first pin as a guide for the second. So I have nice straight holes. Um, there are some marring and scarring and, and marks in there, but not bad. And then I, I actually uh, reamed it all out. Uh, with a reamer I have. So it's actually quite smooth now, and I'm pretty happy with it. The openings, I'm probably going to file um, just to clean them, but it, overall, really not bad. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the on the Max 26 XLT. It's got a, a slot-type retainer um, and then a nut, I believe, on the other side of the pin over there. And it, also, it's a three-quarter, which I don't understand. I mean, really, one inch is probably overkill for this thing anyway, but I still, you know, I just don't see the need to to go down, you know. It's a, I feel like these tractor companies are always downsizing and and lowering specs. You know, every year a new machine comes out and things are smaller and weaker on it, and that that bothers me, you know. Um, so anyway, the pins are right here. These are the Max 26 XL pins, nice and beefy. They have a bolt type retainer. Uh, Zerks are right in the end. I love that. Really well built. These are these are just nice pins, you know. They're just nicely built focus you damn Ugh. anyway uh so they go in like that and then i've got um retaining bolt holes right there and grade eight three eighths bolts that are going to uh accept them like so like so and uh yeah that's it nothing crazy to it so that pins on you use one inch washers on each side for the loader arm and the hydraulic arm okay so four washers four washers and uh yeah pretty easy so that's 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 that all right not a big deal any of you guys can do it go do it it's awesome um i'm going to take a picture of the uh actual tag that this thing oh boy uh came with originally so that's that all right you guys know the deal. That's how you get it on. It's it really matched up beautifully, actually. And I did kind of go on this with a with a with a wing and a prayer, um, just kind of betting that they didn't change a whole lot in the dimensions. I did kind of measure too um, at the dealer, but yeah, it's tough to see, you know. Um, and so with it on the machine, I got rough measurements, and I said, all right, you know, let's just order. It was 430 maybe 440 bucks for the adapter. Um, like I said, it was about a couple hours of me drilling and reaming these holes, and two bits, so maybe 80 bucks in bits. Not bad, you know, compared to a $900 adapter, I'm, I'm up, you know. I'm happy with that. So tomorrow will be the bucket, uh, cutting that part off right there on this side and that side, and then welding this big old plate on, and I'm probably going to do a couple strengthening little um, braces on the on the adapter too. And um, oh, one more thing, one thing I don't like, and this is a really nicely built adapter. I will give them credit, but where the where the uh, the pins go down for the quick attach, there are no Zerk fittings on those. Um, blocks you know there's blocks that retain the pins they're they're right down here i'm pointing at it right there this big big nasty machine block where this pin you know goes through there's no zerk fitting on there and i don't love that i mean i can always keep hitting it with pb and do it the lazy way but i'm probably going to drill those uh, uh i'll either use a right hand bit nope not there uh sorry on that side on the inside i'm gonna probably use a I drill and tap right around the middle of it right here 
and put a, uh, a Zerk fitting in. Um, it's just kind of the smart way to do things, you know, while I'm Zerking the whole machine. I, I grease my machines pretty routinely, so uh, there's no reason not to, you know, take care of this thing the right way. Anyway, um, that is all I got. Um, so, yeah, we'll get we'll get more to it tomorrow, and I will probably do a little time lapse of the cutting and maybe of the welding and uh, finish up. That's it. Thank you. Downstater out. All right, so as you can see, I uh, got done with all the ears, taking them off. I did two methods of doing it uh, for you to look at, which was basically on the closer side to me, I ground the welds, right? Pretty laborious, pretty shitty way to do it, but or uh, crappy way to do it. I got to try to make this family friendly, but um, it does lower the amount of, of grounding you have to do later. So it's, it's really six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. On the other side, I did a straight, you know, a straight blade, a thin grinder wheel, right along next to the welds on the inside. Pulled the plate off, uh, as you saw in the video, and then now you have to grind all those welds down. Plus, it's very hard to not dig into the sub, the sub layer, the, the layer of metal underneath the actual bucket. So you're gonna have to go through and, and make weld and clean up and, and strengthen it back together again before you weld the plate back on. Um, you're gonna have to do that on this side as well. So it, it really, you know, pitter patter, let's get at her. You know, you just do it. I mean, just get it done. Um, letter Kenny, if you don't know it, watch it. Anyway, uh, welding sparks. Got me kind of hot right now, and the wifey said, uh, let's go for a ride on the bike. So, yes, ma'am. So I'm going to stop here uh, probably later tonight. Go ahead and finish up the grinding, get the MIG welder out, uh, fill in all my cracks, holes, crevices, whatever, grind one more time, then do a paint grind, uh, which is really just more of a you know scuff just to get the paint off of there. It's pretty good paint on these stock uh, buckets, so it does take some time. Uh, and then... Uh, grind off the plate and weld that on um, and I'm going to grab the washers I need for the adapter so I'll have that today and um, might be able to get this done today again I do things kind of at my own leisure I'm not uh, I don't know I have a day job so I'm not too concerned about this kind of stuff uh, that's what I got um, so we're making good progress you know you can see that took me maybe I don't even know to be honest with you probably uh, 20, 30 minutes, something like that, to do both both sides, and then it'll probably be another 30 minutes worth of grinding and filling with the MIG welder, and uh, you know should be good to go at that point, and we'll get it ready for welding. That's about the end of the real project, so we'll try to keep this video not too long. Thank you, Downstater out. So working on the tractor again this morning. Um, Got everything kind of lined up where I want it. You know, uh, the, the angle here is not critical, but you don't want these pins uh, for the quick attach dragging in the dirt or the gravel or whatever you're doing. So you got to kind of get it mocked up the way you want it before you start welding. Um, I pretty much have everything off the back of the bucket at this point. There's a little bit more to grind off today, and then I got to clean it up with the MIG welder and then grind again and kind of get it prepped ready for... The real welding of this plate right here um, but I wanted to mock it up and make sure I'm good with everything and, and figure out you know where my levels are going to be because it's all going to be off the machine when I'm welding it so um, basically I've come to the conclusion that I'm just going to run a straight line right off the top of this bucket straight back line up the plate with that center it 
and call it a day. You know, this isn't um, rocket surgery. This is just, you know, simple welding and fab. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, we're getting pretty close here. I, you know, this job will probably take you, I would say four hours if you did it stop, you know, start to stop. I'm, I'm doing it, you know, 30 minutes at a time. I have two young kids and uh, uh, a bit of a neck issue. I, I got, I had sur surgery about a year ago and, you know, I can't, I, I get, I get headaches and nonsense like that when I'm sitting and doing a lot of stuff so i you know i work for about 30 minutes and i'll go for a ride with the wife on the bike or something and um you know that, that's kind of how we operate you know just kind of take it easy and take your time um so as i said that's where i'm at that's where we're kind of headed with this uh, i'm gonna be grinding today welding grinding again and then doing the final weld and then basically the job's done the uh the bracket was mounted today um, no issues at all um, and when I say bracket I mean the actual adapter um, to the machine it did require some one inch uh, where are they uh, I don't know where they are anyway I have some one inch machine bushings that I was using to fill up the gap the only difference like I told you guys before from that adapter to, from from that machine to this machine is the three quarter holes that I had to drill out to one inch and then also the ears on the adapter are about they're about a quarter inch total wider so you got to put an eighth inch on each side of the uh, loader arms and of the hydraulic cylinder it's not a big deal it's easy to do it takes two seconds but um so you want to get some good quality um you know properly coated uh machine adapters you know machine bushings so they're one inch center and then uh, i believe they're one and three quarter on the outside or something like that um and you just slide them in as you're sliding the pins in and and bob's your uncle it's it's easy it's not a you know you don't need to be a mechanic to do this job you don't need to be a good welder either i'll show you in a minute uh just how bad of a welder you can be now i mean i welded for years in the fab shop but um it does it does change things a bit uh when you can weld a little better but you really don't need to be an amazing welder to get this job done either um yeah so that's basically all i got um i'm gonna get cracking probably do another time lapse just so you guys aren't watching me you know watching my ass and, and all that and then <laughs> running around uh you know grinding and, and welding this thing so i'll probably set up a time lapse just get that done real quick and then uh finish up paint and then uh close it up Hey, so uh, back on to this project. Um, so I just got done welding, as you saw in the time lapse, uh, filling in all the cut marks from where the, the original gusset and the original ears came off the bucket, right? Um, there's no need to keep those on, as I explained in the, part, in the early part of the video. It just kind of, it adds useless weight because the, the plate that I'm going to be putting on is a uh, quarter inch. It's nice and thick. and it will it will put back on the gussets that were there plus i'm going to build some skids right here for the bottom of the bucket so it'll be plenty strong by the end there was no need to keep that on plus it, it gave me an uneven surface to weld the plate back on so um took it off uh as you saw earlier you know there's two methods to do that they're both kind of the same at the end of the day um and then you know the one side where i had more deep cuts i'm just welding it all anyway so even this part is really the same at the end of the day um, it's, it's not complex stuff. So now what we're going to do is take a flap wheel on a grinder and go over all these spots again 
get it nice and even and flat and, and ready and prepped. And then I'm also going to grind paint at this point too. I'm, I'm almost at the end here uh, of, of this project. And then uh, we're going to take the plate, uh, put my holders on, you know, to make sure I get my height correct, center it, weld it, call it a day. And uh, we'll be back for that. So let's get at her. All right. So uh, at this point we have the uh, adapter plate welded, tack welded onto the bucket. Um, the measurements, you know, are pretty, I wouldn't call them critical, but you know, they are any measurements critical really. So um, the biggest thing with these is that you don't want your pins anywhere near ground contact. It can bend the pins, it can wear them out, it can do all sorts of weird stuff. Plus it'll, it'll uh, spit dust up inside the pins. You know, if they're too close when they're dragging, it, it kind of, I've seen it happen on skid steers. So. Uh, with with improper buckets that were on them. Anyway, um, so as you can see, we got a lot of hang on this and on the bottom of the lip. So I'm going to take the tractor, turn it around, do a quick mount test. Hopefully the tack welds hold up, and uh, you know see how it looks. If it looks good, I'll weld it home and call it a day. Uh, if it doesn't look good, then you go again. You know it's part of the whole deal here. So get the tractor started, turn it around, and uh, you guys can take a look. Alright, let's get you a little lower there, show you what I'm talking about. So, not sure the, vi the view you're getting here, let me see. Hey, yeah, you can kind of see, so, we got about a half inch there. Um, honestly, I don't love that. You know, it's pretty damn low. Uh, I'm not real comfortable with that, so I am probably going to snip these and move them up about at least half an inch. So, you know, glad I did that. Um, glad we're getting a better idea of what it needs, and, uh, you know, we can go from there. Um, you know, these things are all about trial and error and making sure you get things right. You know, that's the bottom line. So... On this one, I just, it's a little low for my liking. Um, 
Is it okay? Probably, yeah. It probably would be okay, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it once. I'm going to keep this tractor for a bit, so let's do it the right way, you know? Uh, so I'm going to snip all that off and pop it up at least a half an inch. Uh, so unfortunately, I will have a little bit of reveal on the top. It's okay. You know, we'll try to make the welds look good and, and uh, you know, call it a day. That's what I got. Uh, I'll show you the finished product in a bit. All right, so I wanted to do a wrap up on the video. Um, as you can see, adapter's all done. Uh, it came out pretty good. Um, glad I did that test fit and cut off and reweld of the plate because it was definitely too low. Um, now it's at a great height where it's not too high on the bucket and it's not dragging in the dirt. So um, I did, uh, I painted it today after I was done welding everything home and um, did a good, you know, etching primer and a good um, automotive grade paint coat on it. Um, again, nothing great, just enough to stop rust basically. Uh, and that's all you need. You know, this, this track is gonna be used. It's not a garage queen, so I don't need to, uh, you know, uh, make it look like a museum piece uh, it's really just to stop rust and protect the uh, the wells and stuff like that so anyway uh, the only other note I will add uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything that you guys would need to do this job um, the only thing I will say uh, is that I didn't mention the fact that I used a skeleton uh, quick attach plate um, so they have full quick attach plates that are all one big piece they're very heavy um, you know, on, on a machine like this that can only lift, uh, what, a thousand pounds, something like that, it's kind of silly to use those. Uh, it basically, it takes away from your loader capacity. And if you look at a factory back, uh, excuse me, loader bucket, you know, it's they always just put weldments right on the bucket. They don't use a full plate and weld it on and all that. It's just, uh, it's unnecessary weight. It doesn't add any strength. It doesn't help you in any way. It just adds weight. Um, so I, I looked around to find one of these WorkSaver uh, adapters and they're just far better for this kind of a situation, whether it's like a John Deere, you know, 20 or 1023, uh, Kubota B series, even an L series, um, you know, the Masseys, the little 16s and stuff, uh, the Mahindra 16s or the Maxes, any of these subcompact machines that can only lift, you know, a 1, thousand, fifteen hundred pounds. Um, I personally would suggest buy a skeleton uh, adapter plate. You know, it, it just, it makes more sense, you know. Um, the one thing I will say though is that if you do that, if you go this route like I did, there are some weak points that I would address um, with some gusseting. So actually, uh, I'll show you that in a second here, but basically, um, well, let's just show you, right? Why not? All right, so here is the machine, a little bit up close, and um, so you can see exactly what's going on. Um, the two weak points that I know of, first of all, excuse the horrible welds, I had to fill a bit of a gap because the bucket was a little bit warped, so I never claimed to be a professional welder, so take it easy on me, all you, uh, all you, uh, you know, YouTube weld professionals but anyway um there's a weak point here so this is a piece of bar stock basically that goes across there's actually um a gap underneath here so there's air here um so i added a corner gusset there because then we, that way you have a corner you know you have a corner gusset on each side basically of where your your pulling edge is going to be this is where a lot of the pressure uh comes is right on this lip right here so having this free floating is not a great idea uh so i added a gusset on each side uh, welded it real tight on both sides, so shouldn't be an issue there. The only other thing that these things are known to have problems with uh, is right back here. And please excuse the uh, unpainted surface, as you can see. I'm not quite done. I just wanted to get the video squared away. So, um, you know, this actually was a bracket that my backhoe came with. It was just some scrap steel I had hanging around. But um, the other issue you have is that, first of all, you have, you know, this unsupported part of the plate. 
and then you also have a fair amount of of deflection from this plate moving you know as you're as you're working if you're back dragging i don't back drag a lot but if you are back dragging you can have issues there um and you know so you want to support the plate the other thing is that you're protecting your pin in here so the pin you know with your quick attach needs to be protected in case a rock comes you know flying up you don't you, i'd rather it hit this this skid plate that i built rather than that pin right you also can gunk dirt up in here there's just a whole lot of issues you can have with this um one thing i may do is add a connector right here in the future just to give that a little bit more strength um and for all you uh youtube armchair warriors it does not interfere with the bottom plane it's about it's about an eighth of an inch off of the uh the plane of the of the bottom of the bucket so when i'm grading and stuff no issue there so you know you can save that comment um but that's a good idea too. I would really suggest you guys do that. You know, if you're doing this, if you're doing this mod on your machine, um, you know, definitely throw something here. I mean, this is thick. This is just what I had sitting around. But it's a good thing to do. It's it'll it'll give support to the plate. It'll protect the pin. It'll it's just it, it's just a great thing to do. You know. So those are the two kind of weak points. I also welded this thing home all the way around um, to keep water out and to just give it a nice strong weld um again do what makes you feel comfortable you know you could do the strength of this is no different than really doing you know two inch welds all the way around i just personally like to weld stuff home you know just like they do from the factories um you know now something like that like a wear bar you see they didn't weld that there you know and that's fine there's structurally there's no issue there um because this is a wear part anyway you know but when it comes to these plates, this is never coming off. So it, it got welded home all the way around. There's actually double welds on each side. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, that's really it. That's the only other thing I wanted to add. These skid plates, ugh. And these gussets right here, you know, they just make a ton of sense. And um, really, just it just makes the job much better, you know. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's all I got for you. Um, you know, if, if you like the video and you have some other ideas that you think I uh, should do, uh, feel free to drop a comment. I'll, you know, I'll try some other stuff. I, you know, I do a lot of this stuff and I've had people say, well, why don't you just make videos to help people out? You know, might, might be good for other folks. So I figured out yeah, why not? I mean, um, I'm probably going to be doing a fair amount with the off grid cabin stuff that we do. We have, a, we have a cabin. I help some other people with their cabins, a lot of solar videos, uh, you know, uh, just everything involving off-grid, you know, tiny homes, even some, some van stuff that's applicable. Um, so I'll be making some videos with that, some motorcycle stuff and uh, tractor stuff and just kind of general, just the stuff that I'm interested in and what I do every day, you know, um, when I'm not working. So that's all I got. Uh, if you like the video, throw me a thumbs up, maybe do a subscribe. I don't know how all this stuff works, but you know, I'll try to, you know, get some more, some more content going and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.